Hi guys, it's wonderful to be with you again. I I just um I'm so grateful these past like almost thirteen years now just of um no fourteen years of just being with you and sharing the Buddha card with you first on YouTube. Not, then on Facebook now on both and uh, it's so wonderful to be with you today anyway let's pray before we get into it Father I thank you for all the wonderful things you've done all the things you doing you're doing and all the things you have yet to do Lord Jesus fill us with your presence, oh God. Take us to a place where we don't need understanding, where we just um, get to follow you. And Lord Jesus, help us to pace our lives the way you designed um, us to pace our lives. Lord Jesus, let everyone that I'm speaking to hear you. I don't want them to hear Rachel, because Rachel's fine. I hear everything now. I pray, Lord God, that you will just permeate this sermon, take it around the world, and say something that only you can say. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Okay, guys. This sermon is called um, This sermon is called um, Keep It Moving But Slow It Down. That's the title. Keep It Moving But Slow It Down. I was thinking of, um, you know, in my prayer, I mentioned um, pacing our lives um, a couple of years ago. I was watching uh, Mike Todd do an interview with uh, Rich Wilderson, um, and he was talking about when transformation church, which is the church that Michael Todd is a pastor at in, in uh, Oklahoma, um, when Transformation Church started to get big, the Lord uh, started to do some wonderful things, and, and the second year that the Lord started to do these wonderful things. Um, the Lord said, spoke to Michael Todd um, about uh, st striding instead of instead of going fast. Because the previous year, um, things started going really fast. Things started blowing up. And the Lord said, now I need you to take your time, and um, I need you to go at my pace. So, so, um, and in that interview, Michael talk, Todd talked about the pace of grace. And the pace of grace is whatever pace God has graced you. Sometimes um, we we think we need when when the Lord when the Lord tells us to get moving. Sometimes we think we need to go at hyper speed. We need to go at um, we need to go at hyper speed. We need to get it done now. It needs to be done now, but. What the Lord said to me about this personal issue that 
that I was facing this week. He said, keep it moving, but slow it down. See, and when I was discussing with the Lord uh, last night, I said, what what do you need me to say? He said, movement doesn't mean fast. Movement means movement. Movement means uh, movement. Movement doesn't mean you have to do it at, at an accelerated pace. He's like, I just need my children this year to move with me at whatever pace I've assigned for them to move. See, the pace of God is different for every person, and you can't move at someone else's pace. Because because that, that person did that in that time, it doesn't mean that God has God has ordained that time for you. No, that time was ordained for that person. You know, um, like it's like me. Like God has not assigned me to um to to lead a church like Elevation Church although I admire my pastor Stephen Furtick and although I I admire what God has done that is not the pace that God has designed for me I have different gifts different talents different preaching styles, and that's okay. Not to say that God won't open the door for me to lead a church that day, but my, but the church he has put inside of me may be different than Elevation Church. And it's not that I can't take some of the tools and some of the um, um, and some of the skills that he has he put in Pastor Furtick, but um, I don't have to, or he hasn't called me to go at that pace. He's, he's taught me that I have to go at the pace that he has ordained for me. And I, th- and I think the problem with social media is you see all these people and their highlight reel. And you feel that you need to get there uh, by that pace not realizing that God is very distinct when it comes to certain things. And he has not only a certain purpose, but a certain pace that you, that you need to get to that purpose. So if he says to speed up, then you are to speed up. If he says, slow down, you need to slow down. If he said, keep it moving, but take it slow, it just means keep going, but, but, but take it slow, take it gradual. He said, sometimes movement is not acceleration. It's not fast, fast, fast. It's not get here now. It's slow and it's steady. And sometimes as as human beings, we want to get there now. But the Lord's saying, you need to go at your pace. 
some people he's calling acceleration. He's calling you to speed up because you've been dawdling for so long. He's told you to do something for five years and you're still um, like, oh, is this something that he told, me, told you to do? Yes, it is. And he's going to give you side after sign and friend after friend and sermon after sermon. And he's like, when are you just going to do what I've told you to do? I've, I've given you sign after sign, sermon after sermon. Uh, you you watch this for you watch this and watch this. You don't need any more advice. You don't need to read any more books. You just need to do with it the thing, and you need to stop being afraid and know that I'm with you. And for others, he is saying, slow down. For others, you are going at a mile, you are going 50 miles or kilometers uh, um, um, a minute, a second, and you are speeding through life. And you're like, I gotta do this now. I gotta do this now. I gotta get here. I gotta get here. I gotta get here. I gotta get here. I gotta get married by the age of 25. I gotta have kids by the age of 30. I gotta do this. I gotta do that. I gotta have the career. I gotta do this. And he's saying to you guys, slow your roll. Slow down. You're not even hearing me. You're too busy saying, I got to get this, I got to get, get this, I got to get this, I got to get this. He's saying to you guys, slow down. You need to listen to me. And he said, life is not a competition. He said, life is not a competition. Life is a purpose to, to fulfill whatever calling and whatever purpose I've ordained you to be. And you can't fulfill your purpose. You're just going there and going there and doing this. And I have to do this list. I have to do that list. I have to do this. I have to do that. And he's t telling you what he's placed for you is to slow down. Slow down, catch your breath, enjoy, enjoy it. Life is not to be speeded through, it's to be enjoyed, savored, learned from, even the pitfalls and mistakes of life. You're supposed to live them, you're not supposed to, oh, just speed by the lessons and let's go. You don't have to run through your life. You have to live your life. Running won't make you get to God's purpose any faster. It will just tire you out. It'll just leave you huffing and puffing and tired. Um, I don't run, obviously, but I do have to every day br bridge myself, um, 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 like, uh, uh, br bridge myself, which means I need to, I, I need to, uh, lift, lift myself up in order to do a routine that I need to do every day. And sometimes when, when I'm bridging myself up in order for these things to be done, I need to, I need to hold my breath. And sometimes when I'm holding my breath, I'm 
And by the time I let go and sit back down in my chair, I'm huffing and puffing and tired and all that. Although it's a necessary thing, it, it is a thing that I have to realize and I have to say to people, I'm tired. Can I take a second before I have to do it again? Although it's a necessary thing that I must do every day, I need to say to the people around me, look, I need a break. I need to uh, sit down. I need to sit down in my chair because then if I sit down in, in my chair, I can uh, do, do it with, with full strength the next time. A lot of you are just going a mile of, a mile a minute and you're not sitting down your you're emotionally and spiritually huffing and puffing and you're wondering why you're so tired because you need to slow down. And the Lord is saying to you, to you folks, you need to slow down. And, and um, the Lord said it's very important to be aware of the pacing of your life and the pacing he set for you. Because that particular pace is set for you and you alone. Remember I said... Um, I can't remember if it's last week or the week before that the Lord does things very individually and his ch children are very individual. Um, well, you need to ask him how he's pacing your life. And don't pay attention as to what he's doing with anyone else's life, because that's the pace for them. And he's pacing their lives um, with what uh, he's pacing their lives with in your life. And what he's called you to do is different. So stick to the pace he's, he has for you. And you'll be fine. I think the danger is, is when we compare paces. Oh, she got married at 24. I better get married at 23. So we start developing all these stu uh, stupid lists. And he needs to be this. He needs to be that. Or she needs to have this. She needs to have that. And if that person doesn't conform to our list or whatever, we just um, we just say no to them. And the Lord's saying, get rid of your list and just follow the pace that I've set for your life. Throw out the list, whether it be for a man with woman, relational partner, whether it be for your job, whether it be for everything. He's like, Flow, throw out the list and just go by what I paced you to be. And he's saying, hone your senses. He's saying, I've given you physical senses, spiritual senses, emotional senses. He's like, hone those, hone those instincts, hone your, hone your eyes, hone your ears, hone your nose. Like, be aware of what you're feeling, what you're thinking. Be aware of you. A lot of people now are not self-aware. They don't know when they're starting to get angry. They don't know when they're triggered. They don't know 
the subtle nuances to their personality. Like, this makes me upset, or this makes me, um, this makes me cry. I can't watch scary movies because I, I won't be able to sleep at night. They don't even know, uh, there's certain triggers or what triggers them. They just go through life without being self-aware that, oh, this means that I'm scared or, uh-oh, I can feel my heart starting to race. I know what's going on. So the Lord says, I need you to know the pace of your life and be aware of yourself. And that's what what the beauty is of being single. A singleness is really to get to know yourself. Really get to know who you are, what you like, not, not only physically, but emotionally or spiritually. Get really in tune with your body and when it's telling you you're tired, you need to slow down or you need to speak or you need to speed up. You're, you're, you're wasting too much time. You're just waffling in front of the TV day after day. You need to speed up. And I think when you know the pace for your life and when you know yourself, that's the key where God's going to unlock you. Because if you know uh, the pace for your life and if you are aware of yourself and your body and what's inside of you, God can unlock you and use you in the most wonderful way. So if, like, cause I'm, I'm aware when God is speaking to me, there are little, uh, and, and a, a lot of people will say, how do I know it's God? Or how do I know, how, how do I know? How do I know if it's just me, or how do I know if it's God? Like any relationship, it takes time. But you need to be aware of when he's speaking to you, how he's speaking to you, what kind of person you are. And I'm telling you, and I'm telling you because I've experienced this in my own life. No pastor, no book, no, no bishop, no bishop so-and-so, no prophet can tell you uh, how you know when God is speaking to you. That comes with time and God awareness. Not only awareness of God, but awareness of how he communicates with you. They can give you tips or whatever of how it worked for them or what they see in their own life. But at the end of the day, it's you and how he communicates with you. And what I've learned in my life is sometimes with people, he does not use traditional methods. He uses the, the personal skill set, or he uses um, who the person is to speak to them. So he knows that I can't hold a Bible or a book. So he's not going to uh, expect me to uh, study from all these books, but he knows I can easily uh, use my Google and play a song, or I can easily uh, go on Bible Gateway and read a whole scripture, or he knows I can, he can easily audibly talk to me because I'm always listening and I've trained my ears and I know when he's speaking 
versus what I'm speaking most of the time. Some type, some type I flubbed at it, and it's okay if you flub at it. We all make mistakes. We all think that God is speaking, and He wasn't. He wasn't. But because of the way I was born, and because of my capabilities, He has trained me in a bit of a different way, perhaps, than some other preachers uh, who can sit there for two hours and read all these kind of books and do take all these notes and all that stuff. Like, but, but all that came over time and over years of getting to know the Lord and getting to know who he is and getting to know how he speaks to me. And um, listening to preaching is good, but, but whatever preaching you go to, whatever church you go to, that should, should be supplementary material. What I mean by supplementary material, it shouldn't be the first time God is speaking to you. God wants to speak to you all throughout the week, all throughout your life, and he will use anything to speak to you. And over time, over development and time with him, you'll understand when he's speaking, you'll understand how he speaks to you, you'll understand uh, what he's saying to you, and when you understand, um, when you understand how God speaks to you, or the particular pacing of your life, it will open up a world for you that you would not be able to, and you'd be like, oh my gosh, I wish that everyone could experience you like this and could could just walk with you like this, like what you intended for Adam. And, and it is possible. It just takes, like any relationship, time and really honing your spiritual senses. And will you make mistakes? Yes. But he wants to speak to you about the pace of your life. He wants to tell you whether you're going too fast or whether you need to pick up the pace. And no one can tell you that except for him. And what people come along to do is he, re he reveals the world for your life. And if he chooses to confirm it, People come along with supplementary material on Sunday or with, 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 with whatever sermon to come alongside God for your life. So when you hear a sermon, it's supplementary material. Even with my sermon, um, if, if something really gets to you, and you understand that God is speaking to you. And that that just comes along with God, what God has been saying to you all week. Um, Kim Walker Smith, in closing, Kim Walker Smith, uh, she's part of the, um, she's part of a band. Uh, a Christian band who I forget the name of now um, said that you shouldn't come to church to worship. You should come to church already days in the throne room so when you get together 
it just creates a more powerful experience rather than the worship leader having to pump you or whatever part of your favorite worship song or whatever. That should have already been the space that you lived in for days. But the problem is most people come to church um, not having worshipped uh, Sunday at, at um, the previous, not having worshipped since the previous Sunday. And so it it feels good they the atmosphere they they um, pump you up and whatever it feels good you get the word it feels good and then life hits you and then it it just deflates because life is just so hard and heavy that it just deflates but the Lord's sake. I want to show you the pace of your life so that uh, when you come out of church, you have tools and you don't feel deflated when life hits you. You feel ready to take it on. But, but without knowing what he's paced your life to be, who he's graced you to be, at that moment, you'll be just deflated, waiting for the next, living from Sunday to Sunday. He doesn't want you to live from Sunday to Sunday. He wants you to, to just experience him in a new way this year, in a way that he'll walk with you through certain circumstances. He'll tell you what to say to a certain person. He'll tell you how to handle a certain situation. He'll tell you what to spend on this or what to leave. So he wants you to understand you can keep, to keep it moving, but at the same time, you're keeping it moving you can slow it down. He's like, movement doesn't mean fast or acceleration. Movement means progression. So, in whatever stage you're, pro you're, pro you're progressing, at least your movement may. He doesn't, he doesn't want you to speed through life. He wants you to progress at the pace that he's graced you to progress. And he doesn't care how fast it is. And he'll, he'll tell you at what pace he wants you to go. But all you have to do is listen to him and hone those skills um, with time. And with, and with just tenacity to know that um, he's paced you for this pace. And don't look at anyone else's pace. Focus on your pace. And he will bring people alongside you that he's ordained to walk with you at the pace he set for you, whether it be a faster pace or slower pace. And one, one last thing I will say is um, faster doesn't mean better. Faster just means faster. I'll say it. I, I'll say it again. Faster doesn't mean better. Faster just means faster. And sometimes the faster you go, um, you miss stuff that you should have caught along the way. Whereas when you slow it down, you catch all that stuff 
that you miss along the way. So that's why some of you uh, rush to some beliefs and now you're trying to pick up the pieces that you left because you went there, you went to that place so fast and now you're missing certain pieces. Whereas if you had to slow down, slow your roll, then you would have then you would have figured out those little pieces and you wouldn't have had to backtrack now. He's saying keep it moving but slow it down. Thank you guys for being with me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bye. I'm not even gonna try that. That was so bad. I tr I was trying to sing uh uh slowed down by India Reed. <laughs> In case you were wondering, but it just went badly. It it says slow down baby, you're going too fast. You got your hands in the air and your feet on the gas. You're going to wreck your future. Running from your past, you got to slow down. Slow down, baby. Sorry guys, I'm I'm just backing up to to my phone. I was a bit too close. Bye, see you next week.